Well, good evening, and welcome along to our Christmas Eve service. Whether you're someone who would normally come to a service in our church, or whether you're just finding this video and watching along, it's really nice to have you with us. Whether you're watching live here as we approach Christmas morning, or you've seen this video on YouTube and you've tuned in, can I say it's lovely to have you with us. I know in this video there's going to be different folks watching. There's going to be folks who normally come to church, Maybe some folks who would normally just come to church at Christmas. Maybe you've got someone in your house at the moment with the relaxation of the guidelines that is from the church and, and they've invited you to come and watch along with us. And You're all very welcome. Whether you believe in God or not, or whether you're not sure what you make of the Christian Christmas, it's lovely to have you here. In this video we're going to have a series of carols, traditional Christmas carols, some readings from the Bible, I'm going to pray at some point as well and we're also going to have a short message about the meaning of Christmas and the idea behind this video really is just to give us all a chance as we approach Christmas morning together to think on the meaning of Christmas and for us if we're willing to come and meet with God and celebrate as we as Christians are celebrating this wonderful, glorious, joyful, peace bringing, life transforming event when Jesus was born that very first Christmas. We're going to have our first carol now. I'm thankful to a whole number of contributors from across the UK who have allowed us to use some carols by permission in this video. And we're especially thankful to Raymond Bremner who has recorded some carols for us. But our first carol this evening is Once in Royal David's City.
It's lovely to hear those words again, isn't it? Beautiful words that describe the scene in Bethlehem that first Christmas morning. As we think in these things, then let us turn to God now and pray together. Lord God, we gather this evening in amongst all the preparations and festivities of Christmas to stop and to worship you. This is good for us, yet most importantly, it is only right. For you are God, deserving of our praise and adoration at all times. And yet, as we approach Christmas morning, we are so much more aware of how much you deserve this praise. As we think on that first Christmas, we should be in awe that you, God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, descended into our world as a baby. That you, God, took on human flesh, entered into our weakness and fragility, and came to a world which had rejected you. And we praise you all the more that this was with the express mission and purpose to complete the plan that you, Father, Son and Spirit, had made before the beginning of the world to reach out with your eternal love to those who were unlovely to you, to come in mercy to those who had shown you the opposite, to earn at immense cost what is immeasurable, to come and freely know you and your rescue of salvation. We ask that, by the Holy Spirit, you would help us this evening to grasp the height and length and breadth and width of your love for us and the deep significance of the events of the first Christmas in your wider plan to bring this redemption. Lord, as we consider these things, help us to respond with praising, joyful and awe-filled hearts as we ponder Christ in his first coming. Open our eyes, we ask, to the wondrous, satisfying, life-changing truths we find here. Warm our hearts and help us to meet with you as we see the great, wondrous event of you coming into the world. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our second carol this evening is Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. And after this, there's going to be a, a, a little uh, happy Christmas message from our mission worker Rob and his family. And then he's going to read our Bible reading to us from Matthew's Gospel. Oh 
Hello everybody, just wanted to say Merry Christmas to everybody in Pulteney Town and Frumster Church and also to share with you now the following passage. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they had come together she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Amen. Again, we all just want to say, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.
But we're never going to forget this Christmas, are we? And we're never going to forget 2020. It will be a year that will be etched on our minds for the rest of our lives. If you had to take a word to sum up this year, I wonder what it would be. The Collins Dictionary has said that their word of the year is lockdown. The Oxford English Dictionary have said that their word of the year is unprecedented. If I had to take a word that has been with us all through all that we've faced, it might be the word enough. Do you remember back in March when we were looking at the supermarket and wondering, will there be any or enough Luro? Do you remember then when we were so thankful for the NHS workers and we, some of us stood on our doorsteps and clapped to thank them because we could not help but thank them enough for all they did? Then there was the testing programme and was there enough capacity? And then there was the vaccine, would it be effective enough? And would there be enough to go round? But perhaps the way in which this word has been with us most personally and pertinently is the question we've all had to ask ourselves, either out loud or in the quietness of our thoughts. Do I have enough? Do we have enough resilience and energy and resources to get through this? In the reading Rob read to us earlier, we heard about Joseph. And you could, I suppose, sum up that story as someone who has gone through a life-changing experience, but who finds something that is enough to help him go forward. Joseph went through an experience that turned his whole life upside down. His fiancée Mary came to him and she said she was pregnant, but this was not happy news because he knew he wasn't the father. And you can imagine in that moment his whole hopes and dreams of their life together would have been pulled like a rug from underneath them. He would wonder, well, what do I do now? We all know that when these things happen and relationships end, it's very difficult and can affect people for a long time. And it doesn't just affect the individuals, it affects families. And we know in a small town what happens when there's these scandals that it goes on and the story goes on and there's rumours and there's whispers and there's gossip. And in Joseph and Mary's day, this was ever so much more. It was a deeply shameful thing to have something like this happen in your family and it would follow them around for the rest of their lives. Joseph kindly resolved to quietly divorce Mary. He didn't want to put her through that public humiliation. So he resolved to do that. But that was until he had this dream where this angel came to him and the angel said that this baby was a special baby. It was a baby conceived by the Holy Spirit. That this was a baby that was nothing to do with Mary's unfaithfulness, but exactly to do with God's faithfulness to his great plan. And Joseph, in hearing this, then decided to go forward. To go forward with Mary and this baby. To face the looks and the gossip and the sniggers and all the things that would follow them around for the rest of their lives. Well, what was that? Well, I think we see it in the two names that are given to this baby, which shows that there was something that was enough for Joseph and is enough for me and you, not just today, but for the times ahead. The first name is Emmanuel, which means God with us. For Joseph, knowing that in this baby God was with him, was enough. I don't know what your view of God is, but if you're someone watching who is trusting Jesus already, I'm sure you can look back on even just this year with all we've faced and say, God has been with me, and that has been enough. I want to assure you that Jesus, God Emmanuel, God with us is enough for you tonight. And he is enough for you tomorrow. 
however you might celebrate Christmas and however different it is to how you'd want it to be. And he will be enough for you in these dark months to come. And in this uncertain new year. And in the years to come beyond that. I recognise though that if you're not a Christian person, if you're not sure what you believe about these things or you're just new to them completely, you might say, well, hold on a minute. How do you know that you can trust this God? Well, we see that, I think, in the second name, Jesus, which means God saves. That means that God is working out his rescue, his salvation in Jesus. And he offers it to us all. I know we're all fed up with COVID and I'm, I'm sorry to mention it again and mention it so much, but it's what's going on in our lives at the moment. And I want to use the language of COVID to explain to us what this salvation, what this rescue, what this saving is all about. In the Bible we're told that there is a disease, an infection that has got deep within us in the world. And it's called sin. It is deeper and has more of a corrupting and shocking effect on us than COVID or any other disease. It's more than just what we tend to think sin is some silly little things. And it's more than just what's outside of us, what either we do that is wrong or what we don't do, which is what we should do, which is right. It's in here, it's a deep thing that has got into our bones it's an attitude which rejects God and his ways and goes our own way. God hates sin. He is perfect and pure and without any taint whatsoever. But the amazing thing we read in the Bible is that he came to us in Jesus to find for us, to make for us, a fix to our great problem. God really should have isolated himself completely he would have been within his rights absolutely to stay distanced. And yet he came. And he didn't wear a mask. He did not shift awkwardly around us, but came to us as we were. And he did this, essentially to make himself a vaccine. This though was not the quick plan of scientists and financial backers and governments together. This was the eternal purpose and plan of God from before even creation itself. As Father, Son and Spirit came together, that the Father might send the Son in the power of the Spirit to come and achieve this wonderful thing. Which was that he would, in Jesus, grow and as a man experience this sinful world while not being tainted with it, but would see absolutely its effects would show his power over them in his life and ministry but ultimately would be rejected and die on the cross at the hands of sinful people who would reject him and he did this not just that we would see the sinfulness of who we are but that this would be the very method God would use to rescue us from that sin to pay its price and to satisfy his justice. And then Jesus was to rise again from the dead, to create a, a new humanity in him, a new life and a new way, so that anyone who came to God through him would be able to know a new life free from the grip of sin, inoculated from the wrath of God that we deserve, and know the healing of God in our very lives and the hope of a completely healed self and world in eternity to come. This is the wonderful rescue that Jesus came to bring. Christmas is just a small part of it. It's, it's just part of that greater story. But it is a wonderful, compelling, life-changing message. And it is more than enough. Joseph, of course, didn't have it all. But he could look forward into the unknown and trust God, who said he was Emmanuel, and that this Jesus was born to save people from their sins. And I want to say to you, this is offered 
to you. That you might come to God through Jesus. That you might be rescued from this helpless predicament we are in. And that you might find him to be enough, not just in this moment, but that you would walk with him through the rest of this pandemic and beyond what the rest of we face in our life. And that you would know his mercy and his love. And that he would find you and you would find him to be faithful and that you would experience an eternity with him in a perfect world forever God is enough in Jesus Christ Well, I want to share with you now a couple of carols which we've brought together which are, are more reflective by tone. Just an opportunity to think about this message this evening and to consider these things as we go towards midnight and to Christmas morning together.
Well, if I have my timings right, it should now just about be turning midnight, and it should now be Christmas morning. And I want to extend to you and all those with you today a very, very happy Christmas from myself and from the church. However you're celebrating it, I hope it is a good day and that you enjoy it. It's been a very hard year for us all in many different ways. And I hope God blesses you richly this Christmas Day. Just as we come to the end of our video, we're now going to share in our final carol, which is a traditional one that is sung at this point in a Christmas Eve service. And it is, O come all ye faithful.
Well, thank you so much for tuning in this evening, this morning. I hope you've enjoyed the service. Let me pray for us all as we finish. Lord God, we thank you that in your love and in your mercy you came to us in Jesus with a wonderful rescue to draw near to be God with us and to save us. We thank you for the wonder of this. We thank you for how we've been able to consider it together. And we ask that you would help us now, by your Holy Spirit, to praise and adore Jesus, the one who came for us. And live this Christmas morning, trusting in him. For his sake we ask. Amen.